Monday was slow, but Tuesday isn't. We got six games for you on tap tonight. My name is Andrea Sachinko, and you're watching the LKHL update. First game of this Tuesday takes place in Vladivostok, where Admiral faced their arch rivals Amor. Amor won last three games between the two in Vladivostok. Moreover, Amor scored just one goal over the stretch. They sure have a lot to prove tonight. And they start the way they wanted late on the first period. Christian Kusela sets up Maxim Kondrata for a one-timer, and he cranks it in for his third of the season. One nothing or more. Let's skip ahead to the third. Amor still have the lead, but it's about to change. Just 49 seconds into the frame, Viktor Alexandrov stuffs it in from the doorstep to tie the game up. 18-year-old rookie Daniil Kurashov picks up his first career KHL point on the play. Alexandrov scores his third, and we're at at one. Eight minutes later, home team grabs the lead. Ivan Gorolenko steals the puck at the boards, pokes it loose to the slot, and Vladimir Kachov finishes the job. Kachov scores his 10th goal of the year, and Amor will take a 2-1 lead. They're not gonna give it up either. Admiral beat Amor for the fourth consecutive time in home ice. This time they edge their arc rivals 2-1. Let's head over to Nizhny Camps now, where Nefty Kimik fess up to on the list. On team strikes early, just under 7 minutes in, Pavel Poradin carries the puck into the zone through the middle, gives it to Pavel Kulikov, and he beats a Gorstinsky for his second of the year. one nothing Nefty Kimik. But then after on the list, scored two in a row in a span of just 47 seconds. First, Nikolai Timashov puts the puck on net from the blue line, and it goes in. Timashov extends his point streak to three games, and it's a tight game, 1-1. In the very next shift, Alexis Simakov carries the puck in on an odd man rush here, eyes on Anatoly Goloshev, but goes for a shot instead, and that was a good call. Simakov takes a third of the year, and it's 2-1 after Mbilis after 20. Early in the second period, after Mbilis scored another one on a power play. Evgeny Chisalem feeds Alexander Turchinuk from behind the net, and he scores his seventh. That's becoming their signature play, too. It's 3-1 after Mbilis now. Seven minutes later, after the list are back on a power play and they convert again. This time it's Petr Kolko who tips the puck in on Dmitry Migalinsky's shot. After the list lead 4-1 now. Less than a minute later, Nifty Kibi get a goal back. Mitchell Makarov throws the puck in the slot from behind the net and his brother Konstantin Makarov scores his second of the year. 4-2, but there is over 30 minutes left to play in regulation. This is not a comeback story though. Late in the period, Alexei Miknov skates hard to the slot, chaos ensues, and Petr Kolko finds the way to score his second of the game. They obviously reviewed the play by rolling to go goal anyway. 5-2, and that's the way it's gonna end. After Mbilis won the third consecutive game while Nifty Kimik was the third in a row. 5-2 is your final. We're still in Tatarstan, this is Kazan and tonight Ogbars holds Boris. Home team gets on the board 11 and a half minutes in and it's a beaut. Mitri Obokov to Fyodor Malikin back there to Mikhail Vornikov and he gently taps it in. Marvelous pass and play by Ogbars and they lead 1-0. Two minutes later they improved the lead to 2-0. This time Stepan Zaharchuk feeds Mikhail Vornikov down low, he sets up Malikin in front and Malikin one times at home for his 7th of the season. Ogbars lead by 2 after 20. Maurice gotta go back early in the second. Martin St. Pierre nets his fifth of the season off an incredible dish by Brandon Bachansky. I can watch this over and over and over again. What a move! But that's as close as Boris can get on this one. Akbar's hold on to the one goal lead and they take it 2 1 on home ice. Boris lose their third consecutive game on the road to Akbar's. We're now in Moscow, where Red Army face Madvishak. Your starting goals in this one are Drew McIntyre and Yelisa Rockin. And McIntyre showed us everything he can to give Madvishak a fighting chance. Led in the first period, Maxim Maiman feeds Andrei Svetlakov down low, but McIntyre gives him nothing to shoot at. After the second period, Andrei Svetlakov sets up Bogdan Kiselevich for a shot of the hash marks, stopped by McIntyre again. A few shifts later, Jan Mursik passes it to Valery Nichushkin from the right wing. He gives it to Slava Snovin in the slot. That's not getting past McIntyre either. Late in the period, Red Army set up captain Denis Denisov for a shot from on top of the circles. McIntyre comes out and gives him nothing to shoot at. He stops 21 shot in the first 40 minutes of play to keep it deadlocked. Moving on to the third period and Mavishak finally opened up the scoring. Admin Herberg beats Ilya Sorokin for his third of the year. It barely got over the line, but that's all it takes. 1-0 Mavishak. 
Three minutes later, the Red Army tie it up. Artyom Blazhevsky cranks it on net from the point, and Jan Mursik tips it in for his fifth. Tie game 1 1. And just 9 seconds later, the red and blue grab the lead. Ruki Semyon Kashalov snipes it for his second. Home team leads 2 1 now. And late in regulation, Nikita Pivtakin secures the win with a 5 on 3 power play goal. It was a bumpy ride for Red Army, but they got the result they wanted despite Drew McIntyre's heroics. Red Army 3, Medvedev 1. This is St. Petersburg and we're here to see Slovan face Red Hot SKA who are red in a 9 game winning streak. 5 minutes into the game, SKA go on a power play and they open up the scoring. Nikita Grusev and Vadim Shepachov set up Yevgeny Dudanov for his 11th of the year. Home team take a 1-0 lead. But Slovan showed their teeth late in the period as Mikhail Glinka scores his first career KHL goal. He's gonna remember for a very long time, make no mistake about it. It's not easy to score on SKA. So far nobody has allowed fewer goals this season than St. Petersburg. But SKA crushed Slovan's hopes with a dominant performance in the second period. First, three of the defensemen find the back of the net on a power play. Three minutes into the period, it's Anton Bilov who hammers it past Barry Brass' top shelf glove side. There's no stopping that bullet. Shortly after that, Vadim Shepachov sets up Patrick Kersley for his second of the year from on top of the right face of circle. And just over a minute later, Slava Boynov fits Ilya Kolochek for a one-timer and Igor Yakolov gets his second of the year on a rebound. They're just getting warmed up too. Three minutes later, Nikita Gusev bounces on the rebound to make it 5-1 SKA. Vadim Shepachov and Evgeny Dodonov get the assist on the play. And with just 30 seconds remaining on the clock, Igor Yakolov beats Barry Brass for his second of the night. That's right, SKA scored five unanswered goals in the second period. Igor Yakolov nets two of them, but Vadim Shepachov registers four assists, and SKA go on to win their 10th consecutive game. 6-1 is your final. And just one more score to tell you about, Lada beat Uger 4-3 in home ice. Rookie Denis Zernov scored the winner early in the third. And that's it for the LKHL update. Come back tomorrow though for six more games including Sochi Torpedo and Salavati Live vs. Avangard. My name is Andrea Sachinka, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you again soon.